Today we're going to be taking a first look at a brand new line of industrial gigabit Ethernet switches from Red Lion, the Entron NT5000 series. First we'll start with an unboxing, here you can see the package it arrived in. And let's go ahead and take a look at the label on the box here, let me go ahead and zoom in on it. And at the top you can see the model NT5006, underneath that we got the UPC and then under that we have the serial number. So okay, let's go ahead and zoom back out and let me get my uh, Leatherman and we will cut this guy open. Okay, one, two, and across the top here. Nice. Okay, let's open this guy up and see what's inside. Okay, there's the switch. We see it there. Let's get it out of there. There's also a quick start here. Let's uh, get these both out. Put the box over to the side. And now let's take a closer look at this quick start. Looks like at the top here we have some uh, UL and CE. Then we have the quick start instructions, which go down here towards the bottom. On the back we have some uh, model number information and whatnot. I think I'll just put that to one side. Now let's take a look at the switch itself. You can see it's in this uh, plastic here. Let me pull it out. Put that cardboard over to the side. And now let's take a look at the switch itself here. And uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here. And let's take a starting look at the front here. You can see the six ports. And if we look at the side here, you can tell this is a metal casing. At the top we have a vent, we have a power terminal block, and we have that little USB port there. Of course, this is where we bring in the power. And if we look at uh, the back, we can see it's DIN rail mountable. And if we look at the bottom, it's also vented there. Here we have the Red Lion logo. And the front, we'll take a close look at that. You can see the six ports and the model number there right at the bottom. And if we look at the right, let me go ahead and zoom in on this label here. And let's see what we can see here. You can see at the top, the model number. You can see the uh, UPC, you can see the MAC ID, the serial number, and uh, down at the bottom you can see the DC input legend. And with that, let me uh, pause here, get it all wired up, and I'll be right back. Okay, now that we have it all wired up and plugged into a couple of PLCs, let's go ahead and provide power to it and let it boot up here. Yeah, it appears to be all booted up now. So let's go to the quick start guide that was in the box. I actually have the PDF version up here. And as we read through the directions, we can see that by default it would get, if it was not connected to a DHCP server, it would get an IP address of 192.168.1.201. Now because I didn't want to disconnect from my DHCP server, I logged into my DHCP server and I found it was automatically assigned an address of 192.168.1.32. More than likely, though, you'll give the MAC address to your IT department and they'll assign you an IP address. So from there, what I want to do is I want to go to the home page for the device. So let's go to 192.168.1.32. And let's make sure there's an HTTP in front of that. Okay. Now it's asking for a username. And if we go back to the Quick Start Guide, it says the username is admin, there's no password. So let's go ahead and enter that in. And it should prompt us to change the password. Okay, so we'll create a user. We'll call it IIA for Insights and Automation. And for the password, we'll use one of our common office passwords here. And confirm. You can see that it's going to remove the default admin, so we need to make sure we remember these credentials. So let's go ahead and confirm that. Okay, now this is the optional uh, startup uh, wizard that we were told about in the podcast. And it says, hey, do you want to begin? And I'm going to go ahead and walk through it. So let's go ahead and begin. Would you like to save your settings now? Yes. Okay, and here I'm going to go ahead and log in with my new username and password.
Okay, from this screen we can see users. Okay, I can add a new user. I don't need to do that. We can see the IP. This is the default IP, but DHCP is enabled. And then we can see what the ports are doing. You see all the ports are enabled. You can see the link status. We've got two here, 100 megabit full duplex, and we have the gigabit uh, connection here. And uh, N-Ring forwarding is enabled, and here we have MSTP forwarding. So I'm not going to change any of that. Let's go ahead and go over to the dashboard. Here we can see the graphical representation of the switch itself. Looks just like what we're seeing on the camera. And uh, over here we see port traffic. We see some information coming in. We can see we got two informational, four notice and four warning. Okay, we got system. We can see the IP address here. We've got alarms. No current alarms. Let's go to system log. We can see user added, IA. That's the last thing we did. And you can see everything that's started since we booted it up for the first time. Let's uh, look at ports and VLANs. We can see which ports are enabled, which are not. Uh, we don't have any redundancy configured. Security, we're not doing anything there. We just created it. Of course, you see my username. Remote management and traffic management. Now, one of the things you'll see down here is you'll see the model number, an NT5006. You'll see the firmware currently in it. You'll see the MAC address, and you'll see the serial number of the unit. Okay, let's, uh, you see four warnings here. Let's go to the event log. What are the warnings? Okay. Interface P1, port one, change to up. Six, change to up. Five, change to up. And uh, what else we got here? Version of the startup config cannot be determined. All right, great. All right, let's see if it's working with our PLCs here. So I got uh, TI Portal open. Let's do an update accessible devices here. And you can see it found my S7-1200. And now I'll go to online diagnostics. And let's see if it connects. Yep, so we're good there. Let's switch over to RS Lynx Classic. Yep, let me just yank the plug here to make sure that is truly seeing it. Okay, it's going out. If I come back here, I should see, hey, no more port activity here, right? And then if I go to alarms and syslog, I should see, hey, P6 change state to down. Okay, so let's go back and let's plug the Micro 1400 back in. Give it a moment to come back up. There it is. Now, let's see if this changes. Do a refresh here. Okay, now we can see it's up. Back up again. Go back to the dashboard, and we can see it here. Everything's up and working again. Okay, so at this point, we'll go ahead and disconnect. And that'll do it for our first look at Red Lion's new line of industrial gigabit Ethernet switches the Entron NT5000 series. And I want to thank Red Lion for sending in the sample, for coming on the podcast, and for sponsoring this episode to make it ad-free. With that said, if you did enjoy this episode, please consider giving us a like and a sub. And if you want to follow me or get in touch, you can do so over at automation.locals.com. You'll also find all of my training courses over at theautomationschool.com. With that, I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.